bar none, my favorite library in the Redux ecosystem is Redux Form. It is just such a fantastic library, very well put together. It makes it incredibly simple to put together rather complex forms with a lot of automatic handling of validation and submission and all that kind of good stuff that goes along with forms. I'm looking at a form that was created with Redux Form and it's themed around creating a blog post. So I can enter a title, like let's say a blog post, a category like post and some content like lorem, ipsum, what have you. And then if I wanted to, I could go ahead and submit the form. And right now I've just got an alert that pops up and it says the post has been submitted. This form also has built-in validation like so. So if I don't have any text in a particular input, I get a nice red error message just to alert my user, hey, you need to put some content in here before you can, you can proceed. So this form works fantastic right now. It's in a great spot. It's using Redux form, which is fantastic. There's just one small issue with it. Let's look at the code for this particular form. So here's my form component. This is a single component that is in charge of the entire form. And wow, here's the render method. This is about, oh, I don't know, 20, 25, maybe 30 lines long, the render method. And it's got a tremendous amount of very repetitive logic in here. You can see that I've got three kind of medium level divs. So I've got a div here, I've got a div here, and a div right here. Each of these divs have very repetitive logic inside of them. They have something about a very particular field being touched or invalid. It has a field label, the field's helper, and some more stuff making use of the field helper to handle validation. Also down at the bottom of this file is my validate function. And so down here, I've also got some more repetition as well. I'm saying if a title doesn't exist, if categories doesn't exist, or if content doesn't exist, then show the given error message. So this form right now, it works fantastically. It definitely gets the job done, but there is a tremendous amount of very repetitive code inside this component. So let's work through in this video, doing a quick refactor to really par down the size and kind of reduce some of the complexity of this form, make it easier to make some quick updates in the future if we so require. Since there's a pretty good amount of form or code inside this component right now, I put together a quick diagram just to make it really clear how the file is organized. So our file, post new, has a couple different sections to it. At the top are some import statements. We've then got our React component with the render method. And down at the bottom is our validation function. And finally, some export statement down here as well. So between the render method, the validation function, and the export statement, there is a pretty good amount of shared code or kind of shared logic or duplicated logic, I should say. Let's see if we can't do some refactoring to make this a little bit easier. The first thing I'm going to do for my refactor here to condense this component down big time is I'm going to import the Lodash library. I've already installed Lodash using NPM, so I can import it as underscore from Lodash right at the top. Now let's look at our first refactor, our first opportunity. You'll notice that down at the bottom, I've got my form configuration with the Redux form higher order component. I've got an array of fields down here, title, categories, and content. And this fields definition is what generates all the different field helpers within Redux form. Title, categories, and content are repeated all over the place inside my component. Here's a couple of uses right here, and certainly up in the render method, there's another couple as well. So for the re first refactor, I'm gonna suggest that we pull the definition of, the, of these fields up to a top level constant. And maybe we can, you know, maybe we can use that a little bit. Maybe we can leverage it a little bit to figure out some refactoring that we can do. So I'm gonna take my array of fields here. I'm gonna cut it for right now, go back up to the top of my file, and I'm gonna declare a new constant, fields like so. So the intent here is to create an object at the very top level that has some information about the configuration of the fields within my form. I probably want to have more information about the configuration for each of these fields than just a simple string, so I'm going to turn this into an object instead. And the reason for this will be clear very shortly. So I'm going to comment that out for just a second. We're going to have an object where each key is the name of the field. Like so. So now for each field, 
in my component, I'm gonna pass in a little bit of configuration right here to, do, to kind of provide a little bit of configuration for each particular form. In the case of the title field, the type of field that I wanna show, or the type of HTML input, the, the actual form element that I wanna display on the screen, it should be an input, right? That's what we saw back in the browser. So just to kind of demarcate that, or just to kind of indicate that in my configuration, I'm gonna say that this needs to be of type input. I'm gonna repeat the same process for my other two fields as well. I've got another type of input, and my last one, this is actually not an input, but a text area. So I'm gonna mark it as being specifically a text area like so. Now the other thing that I'm gonna add into my form configuration is the label that I wanna use. So this is the label that's going to actually appear on my form. So I'm gonna place a label, I'm just gonna say title for post, another label of enter some categories, this post, and finally, a label of post contents. So the actual contents of the post, you know, the, the, really the blog post itself or form post, whatever our form is trying to achieve. So now this object right here represents some configuration for each of the three fields within my application. Let's see if we can't now use this configuration to dramatically condense down the amount of code within my post new component. So the first thing I'm going to do to make use of this fields configuration object is I'm gonna go back down to the bottom and where we removed the fields inside the Redux form helper, I still need to pass in a list of fields here. My fields has to be an array of strings. Each string has to be the name of the field within my component. So now using my configuration object, I can use the Lodash helper keys on the fields configuration object. So this will return an array of all the different keys on the fields configuration object, which will end up being title, categories and content, an array of strings. Exactly what I need. So that's a good first refactor. Let's continue a little bit more. Actually, what first, just as a kind of validation here, let's make sure that we're not breaking anything as we go. So I'm gonna flip back over the browser. Let's refresh and make sure we don't have any errors or anything like that. Looks like I can still click in. I can enter some text. I can submit it and I still get my alert message saying that the post was submitted. So our refactor so far is in a pretty good spot. Let's now do some refactoring around our validate function. Again, this is another place where we've got a lot of duplicate logic. We're checking each of our fields and all we're doing here is saying, hey, is there any content in here? If there's not, let's add an error message. So there's another easy refactor we can do here using our fields configuration object. I'm gonna remove all these if statements right now since they're pretty ugly. And instead, I'm going to iterate over my list of fields and for each type and field in there, so type is the configuration object, and field is going to be the actual field name itself, so like the titles, uh, categories, and post. So now I'll say if there is not a value provided, and so this is looking at the values that were passed into the validate function for each field, if there is not a value, then add on to the errors object, enter a field, like so. Okay, so let's now test this out in the browser as well. I'm gonna flip back over. Looks like, okay, I'm gonna type something in, and then when I click out, yep, still getting my validation messages in here as well. So the validate function is working as well, but I don't have to do kind of a separate if statement for every single last uh, field that I've got in my application. So this is dramatically condensed logic. You could definitely imagine if I had like, say 20 different fields, putting down an if statement for each of them would very quickly get pretty maddening. So now let's do the last refactor. We need to break up this gigantic render method that we've got in here. So we've got a render method with a very repetitive div construct in each of these. So we got the three divs and they're all pretty darn similar. So let's break out a separate helper method that I'm gonna call a render field. The purpose of render field is to take a field configuration object, which is the label and its type, the name of the field, and then we want to return from here an actual rendered 
field. So basically an entire div like we have right here. So this div should contain a label, the appropriate type of field control, and something to show the validation message if one exists. So let's give this a shot as well. The first thing I'm going to do is pull off my field helper from Redux form. So this field helper right here is the object provided by Redux form. I get one field helper for each field that I declared down in the Redux form configuration helper. And now I'm going to take one of my divs here. I'm just going to cut the whole thing. I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to put it right in here. And now one at a time, I'm going to change out all the properties, making use of the field config, the fields title, and the field helper. So the first thing I want to do is instead of all the different references directly to title, all these references to title should now be a reference to the field helper itself. So I'll say field helper, field helper, field helper. Well, you definitely get the idea. Next, I need to replace the label in here with the actual label for the element that I want to use. So rather than using a label of title, I'm going to say, look at my field config object, which again is this object right here. So I just have to take field config dot label. There we go. All right, now the last step, and this one's a little bit more challenging. Rather than showing an input, I want to show whatever is being returned or whatever is marked as the type of the very particular field. So instead of my input, I'm going to add in field config dot type, like so. So in the case of the title and categories, this is going to come back as an input. In the, con in the case of the content, it's going to come back as a text area. So I'm definitely going to expect to have the correct form control show up in this tag right here. So now the last thing I need to do is remove these other two divs in here. And instead, I'm going to call, or map over, I should say, my fields object. And for each configuration object in my fields object, I'm going to say render field. And I'm going to need to bind this because I'm making reference to props inside of the helper right here, this.props fields. OK, so I think that's it. Uh, one last quick thing. I think we probably don't need to break out all the field helpers here anymore. So I'm going to take that out as well. Uh, we've got create a new post. We map over our fields configuration object. We've still got our submit and cancel buttons on here as well. And then finally, inside of my render field or my method to just render a single field, I can show my label. We've got our field helpers. Okay, yeah, this is looking pretty reasonable. Let's flip back over. I'm going to refresh the page. Uh, I get a war warning message here about the fact that I'm rendering a list of components. Um, we can easily go back and add in a key property if we wanted to just to get this warning to go away. But for now, it's totally fine to have. So you'll notice first off that all my labels are now the same as the labels in my field configuration object. And let's try to submit right away. Looks like I still got my validation message. I'll put in post title, new post, and some post contents. Cool. And so everything still works. So this has been a great example of how we can take a single component and pull out some configuration. The real rule of thumb here, or what the kind of big jump or leap in faith I would say, is figuring out what properties you want to have for each different field. In my case, I decided that having a type and label was appropriate. One way that you could also approach this is to put on a custom validation function here as well. So if I wanted to, perhaps I could add a custom validation function in here. And then when it came time to validate each particular field, I could put in, I could adjust my each object here to make sure that I also run that validation function. So that would also be a great refactor to do as well. If you've enjoyed this video, I highly recommend checking me out on Twitter. Also follow, like, subscribe, all that fantastic stuff on YouTube. Uh, always check out rallycoding.com once a week. Always find a new post on the React and Redux ecosystem. Hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll catch you next week.